Hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so this time uh, we're going to be having a look at a few things uh, with the goings on at the bench. Uh, we're also going to cover um, the next couple of kits I'm going to be building um, in my schedule. Whether that's how they will then come out to you is another matter, but they're next up on the build pile for me. It's a double build. Uh, same kit, slightly different, two variants. We're also going to have a talk about a few things I've been thinking about recently as far as the hobby is concerned and uh, what I'm doing for myself going forward. And I've managed to score a couple of kits which were very high on my want list and I was looking for them for a very long time and I've managed to get them. So we'll uh, have a quick look at those and see what you all think. So, first off, uh, just a bit of a update on what, what's going on with the channel as far as I'm concerned. So uh, there's plenty of content being recorded in the background. I've got a number of builds on the go. You may see some, I'm not sure. You may just see some upturned lights. Uh, last time we featured the new Tamiya Panzer IV F, which is here. Um, and I'm just doing some mud work on this at the minute. I've got the tracks on one side. I've basically done one side completely. This took me about two, three days to do this completely, learning the process. And then as soon as I wanted to get on with it, uh, this afternoon I put that on in about 20 minutes. So that's one of the things I'm trying to get across with this. Um, for me, the fun in modelling is not in spending six, eight months to a year on one build, making it perfect. Uh, I like to get through kits myself. Um, which obviously works very well as far as having the channel. Um, at the minute the ratio to uh, purchasing stroke building is not correct, but <laughs> it's getting, we're, we're getting there, we're trying to readdress the balance. So my plan is to build through, that's the kind of terminology I'm using, I'm going to build through a lot of kits. I've got a, a large stash, basically I acquired it last year because of lockdown, I basically went to work and had modelling really. Wasn't anywhere to go. Me and my uh, girlfriend, who uh, long term girlfriend, I should probably think of a better term. Uh, but anyway, yes, my girlfriend and I like to go out a lot. Uh, so we go off all over the country, really, um, doing different things, you know, staying overnight, going to see different things and all that. Of course, a lot of that stopped, hasn't really started again. Uh, we've popped over to Wales a couple of times, but they're more day trips. So it was literally. Um, you know, I bought a new Hoover, <laughs> things like that, and then we just bought, I just bought kits, because, you know, that was what I could do. So, I really built an armour stash, because I didn't have one. I did a long time ago, uh, it's all I had, and then I started getting into aircraft, very easy to build aircraft, sorry, buy, well, it's, it's easy to buy aircraft, certainly it was 172nd scale ones as well, so it was quite easy to build through them as well. So um, I got a bit of uh, armour in the stash, there's a bit of a long winded way of saying there's a couple I'm thinking I probably, you know, can move on, there's a couple I bought that I probably, you know, don't really want anymore, but there's an awful lot there that I'd actually like to build. Um, that leads on to the next thing, is to different aspects of the hobby. Now obviously some people want to put their all into a model, um, and that's fair enough. That, you know, each, each to their own. There's, there's many different facets in modelling from what I can see, different things that people enjoy. Um, I, I got a feeling, although if you're in the groups on Facebook or you're, you're in, the, um, in the different circles where you see these people, the, the guys who do very highly detailed builds really, you know, and you said over the top, not over the top, <laughs> really um, extensive weathering and all of that sort of thing. Um, it can make you feel a little bit like that is the way, that's the only way to go with modelling. You know, you, if you're going to do a model, it needs to be your best. And if it's not your best, you're underachieving in some way. That's never said, that's just how, for me, glancing through some of these posts on Facebook, on Instagram, all these places, um, it feels like that sometimes and it can be a little bit wearing and it's caught me out. I've started thinking, yes, I've got to do the best I can of every build, especially if I'm filming, it's got to be the best, got to be the best. I mean, that's not the case, is it? it it's a hobby. It can be whatever you want it to be. Certainly back when, uh, I mean, <laughs> go back to COVID again, but back before COVID, you know, when the driving force was, got shows with the club and the, the, the SIG 
people sometimes say they don't know what that is. That's a special interest group. I run the special interest group for the Spanish Civil War. It's a special interest modelling group with the IPMS. So, you know, you go around to shows in, in England for people who aren't in England, uh, UK, sorry. Our shows have seemed quite different to everyone else's shows, so it wouldn't carry across. But anyway, these shows do also have competitions. Uh, so that was a driving force, you know, to try and do better and also to have a nice display, this, that and everything else. I quickly realised after doing that a couple of times that it doesn't need to be perfect down to the minutiae unless you're actually putting it into a competition. Now, obviously, that's fine. So in that scenario, you know, I used to do one that I was going to put in, in the competitions and all the, all the shows I did and that would be the one I'd pour my heart and soul into, if it were. Since that, there hasn't really been the driving force for that, so I've sort of taken a step back and started to think, why do I do it? What is modelling for? Um, I got a bit carried away with myself last year, you know, we are having weekly videos, uh, trying to build the channel quite a bit, had Patreon as well, um, doing commission builds, and all of those things, they were all great, you know, especially the Patreon guys, you know, the guys who, who would subscribe to you, and put, you know, and put financial backing to you that's how much they they sort of um, admired the work it was it was very humbling and it was a nice thing however it was great as far as the <laughs> weekly videos were dropping as soon as the weekly videos dropped uh, stopped sorry it was another layer of pressure so this is what I'm trying to explain this is this is a very long-winded ramble but you know that's what these are I'm gonna try and do these once a month in this sort of format for me I fought long and hard about what modeling is for me and it it's a hobby. Now I have thought, why do I put the videos up? You know, what am I doing it for? The videos stay, see? Now this is how it's gone. So I had Patreon, I had commission builds, I was building things for videos, thinking um, this would be good, it would get a lot of views, that sort of thing. They're all the things I stripped back because quite honestly, I, I haven't got the time to do it. I can't really push myself to do it. And it was adding a layer of sort of, not stress, but it was, diluting what the hobby was about for me and have to feel like you have to do something that's why I had to stop all of that and I, I'm not doing that again so we won't be starting out Patreon, we won't be doing any of that it's just literally the YouTube channel and my modelling so that's what I discovered <laughs> in uh, my uh, recent time that's how I sort of redesigned things and that's why I had to stop the weekly videos uh, because if I didn't, I would have felt like I had to keep doing them. Uh, I've seen this with uh, other channels. Uh, I, I watch a lot of mini painting channels, they're called. Basically Warhammer, you know, that sort of stuff. i got no real interest in that. I do like the Lord of the Rings figures, again, but I've got no interest to really build them, paint them, or do any of that. But I do like watching all of their channels. No idea why, there's some, got to be something in it. Um, but they do a lot of that. You know, there's a lot of them who've done weekly videos for years and then decided that you know what would happen if I didn't upload one nothing it was fine and he's managed to sort of take a bit of time down and do different videos and that's what I'm hoping to do so I'm not saying that we won't get back to a weekly schedule uh, but it won't be a committed thing that's that's what I'm sort of going on about and for me I'm gonna take the builds as they come I'm gonna do out-of-the-box builds if I want to throw a bit of etch at it I will very unlikely I'm gonna get metal tracks I find them you know 35 pounds Oh, it's got to be a kit I really want for my collection if I'm going to do that. I try and get around the tracks on, on armour. And um, aircraft builds as well, obviously, is um, going to be the same. So, it's good news for you. There will be um, plenty of content coming. Uh, it's just a little gap at the minute. And uh, we've got filler videos, videos like this. So, there we go. There's a rambling chat. Hopefully, somewhere in there, there was something of interest for you guys. I think there was. Done that on the hoof. It sounded quite right. We'll see, how, we'll see if this survives in editing. So next off, we're gonna go over to the bench. I've got a couple of kits to look at. We've got a couple of FX Cromwells that we're just gonna have a little chat about, and then crack into some of these kits that I've managed to acquire. So first off, um, what we've got here is a couple of sets of wheels. So we're gonna have a look at the Cromwell. This was stuff that I pre-recorded and I hadn't had these wheels at that point. So just gonna have a quick look. These are the wheels from Sovereign 2000, which I must admit is a company, I gotta say, I didn't actually think was still around. This is a company I remember when I initially started uh, modeling and um, you know it's in the Tony Greenland book 1995 with doing Sovereign 2000 uh, models um, so it's great that it's still going um, I've ordered these two sets of wheels 
fantastic service. Got a little email just from, I assume, the owner or someone who was decided who was dealing with sending these out, just letting me know that he was going to pack them the next day and they'd be out in the post. So uh, it was an unautomated email, is what I'm trying to say. So great stuff. Sovereign 2000. Check out the website. They're on there. These are £15 each. Um, I did not have to pay postage. So there we go. And this fixes what we've just dis been discussing, the bolt issue in the wheel. So here we get our eight bolts instead of the six, and it corrects them. Uh, so you've got two parts, just like the kit, and then you've got a hub, uh, all cast in resin, all very nice stuff, very fine, looks great. And yeah, very nice detailed wheels. You get these, which are uh, new tyres, and then you get damaged road wheels. And it might, uh, it'd be nice to see if they'd actually um, release some of the slightly different tired ones as well, because there's a number of different tile variants for Cromwells. But there we go, you can see the, the damaged wheels. So I will be using these. I did say I was going to build one, um, one as is and one with the corrections, but um, as I was ordering I thought, well, hell, let's just do it. What I'm thinking about is actually mixing up some of these wheels on both builds. I think we could have some damaged wheels and some new ones next to each other. I don't know, we'll see. I might keep one with and one without. Not sure yet. But there we go, that's the Sovereign wheels. I think that's a very useful thing to have uh, shown on the video and um, check them out. So we're going to have a look at the uh, Cromwell Mark IV, which is a relatively new tool from Airfix. It came out beginning of 2020. One. <laughs> and uh, what we've got here is actually inside the kit. It's it's all parts for a Cromwell Mark IV and a Mark VI. They've done two boxings. I've got both boxings. I've got the uh, Mark VI down on the floor, which has got the short barreled gun. It's the same kit in the box. So let's have a look. So there is a reason we're talking about this one because this is quite a yeah you know, it's quite a good uh, release and it's quite an important release. It's the first time Airfix have really released anything uh, on their own in 135th. However, I think as soon as we open the bags, it's quite apparent that what we're dealing with here is an Academy tooled kit. Now that does not mean that this is a rebox because this kit doesn't doesn't technically exist outside of the Airfix boxing at the minute. However, this is obviously tooled by uh, Academy. There's some telltale signs. You can see it screams uh, a mile off that it's Academy. Now, all in all, um, this is a bit of a hit. It it uh, replaces the Tamiya kit, which is getting a bit old now. Uh, you've got Lincoln Lake tracks. See what I mean with the tan plastic, black plastic. For, you know, it's very much Academy. Uh, and you've also got rubber band tracks if you're not up for Lincoln length. And you've even got a small bit of photo etch. Uh, unfortunately, um, and you know, this is all often more and more the case these days with anything Airfix related, that it, it is got a couple of issues. Um, we'll just flip through these straight away and you can see you've got the new way of getting uh, a whole tub together which is fantastic which has got the separate uh, sides to make up the tub but it looks like very good uh, location marks there's also been a build review in the airfix magazine which i've seen which seems to say it goes together well a couple people building it on the internet um, these are people who would generally mention if there was issues doesn't seem to be any issues at all as far as fit and build wise so very um sensible kind of layout on how we get things going straight into the wheels once the tub's on uh, onto the tracks and then the upper hole goes on and we got this uh, a lot of breakdowns here this is one of the things i wanted to talk about it looks like there's quite a lot of options coming forward for this uh, obviously you know we can go into korean war variants or all sorts of things that can be done here i'm no expert on the cromwell but there is a number of ways that we can move forward however there's also a couple of things that haven't been done that should have been done. Um, so as far as the Cromwell Mark IV, the way this builds up, this is pretty much as it should be. As far as I'm aware, I can't see any real issues with it. Um, everything seems to be in the right place as far as the layout. We've got slide moulded barrel uh, as well with a separate uh, end to the muzzle brake. Nice build up here on the turret. 
Um, it all looks pretty good. You've even got the um, options for different side boxes and a head row cutter all in here. Uh, not called out for in the markings. Uh, but Well, it is actually. Sorry, there is a, a head row cutter there. Um, now, there is a bit of speculation as to whether that was actually used, but, you know, it is a model. You, you, if it looks cool, you can put it on, basically. It doesn't matter. Now, let's just get into a couple of things that are problematic with this kit. And that really boils down. There's, there's two places, especially for the Mark IV. We'll focus on the Mark IV. So the main issue with this kit, unfortunately boils down to the road wheels and it is quite noticeable if you know what you're looking for now um, they are nice road wheels nicely molded you've got the separate hubs that go on here which is what this holes for um, unfortunately there are six bolts here and the Cromwell is known for having eight now are we getting into rivet counting? Are we getting into bolt counting? You could argue both sides of that. <laughs> but that's an error that for a 2021 kit should not be there, whoever you are. I don't care who you are. That boils down to shoddy research and basically missing a trick. And it proves the point as to why it's not Airfix as well, because if Airfix was going to do something with a Cromwell, you'd think first they'd head on down to Bovington and do a scan, which they may well have done. But even worse, they've got a Cromwell in their catalogue. They've got a 172nd Cromwell. And I, you, you know what we're going to do here. This is a relatively new tool, a few years ago, maybe five years ago. And there are eight bolts on the wheels. So that's um, it's a little bit upsetting, really. Um, oh, well, upsetting is a bit over, but you know what I mean. It's a little bit annoying, you know. Airfix are going to come into the game with 135th scale models, and um, you know we've got a balls up on the wheels, which is <laughs> what is the the most iconic feature to the Cromwell. You know, you could argue that it's it's the angular. Uh, squared off turret and the wheels you know and to cock one of them up is a bit of a problem uh, now um, it certainly can be done because lo and behold I was looking on the shelf as we were doing this Italeri have got eight bolts same wheel basically that's another thing you can actually have the the wheels that are, have got the lightning holes as well if you wanted to um, so, yeah, I mean, Italeri in the 1970s got it right. So, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I can't give, uh, can't give anything to Airfix on that. It's a, it's a major disappointment, really. Whether you'll see it, whether you care, that's, that's a different thing, really. Now, um, to get into fixes, I've had to think about this. And, and the way the bolts work, you, you're going to have to take off four. So you could keep these two because they do sort of line up there I'm thinking on that I'm just saying that I don't know if they do actually yeah so they line up top and bottom so it is actually a case what you could do is take off one two three three four you could go to the rear of the wheel that you're not going to see you could take all these bolts off and you could use them or you could use a punch and die set and you just rearrange you just basically squeeze uh, three in there that's what we need to do. So you just that one would come back to there, that one would go up there, and you'd have one in the middle. Uh, you know, water ball lake. Like, I don't think anyone's actually going to do that, but you could if you wanted to. Oh, there is a set of wheels on the market by uh, Sovereign Models, um, Sovereign 2000, who do a resin set corrected, so they do a clean set and a damaged uh, rubber tire set, and they do look plug. Uh, you know, basically. Uh, like for like fit wise so that's an easy way around it but there's 15 quid added to a kit you know the one thing about this kit is it was about 24 pounds absolutely fantastic you could build the thing out of the box you could have a fleet of cromwells uh, you know brilliant stuff but now you've got to chuck 15 quid at it you think all right okay is it worth it i don't know it starts to be a problem then you see as you go down the line so um for someone who wants to give it a go it's an easy fix However, you know, 
do, would you want to cut them off and do that? I'm not so sure. It seems a bit of a pain. I will be getting the wheels because I've committed to building these. So um, certainly for one lot. As we get in a bit deeper, if we talk about the Mark VI, um, it seems to me, like I said, I don't have a, a great understanding of the Cromwell. It seems to me that um, the differences run through uh, the different upper superstructures of the hull. And it's, as the British seem to do, a bit like the Spitfire, you've got you've got a B, a C, a D, E, F type one as you go through on into Korea. Uh, now, my understanding is this is correct for a Mark IV, the, this layout here, uh, as well as the way that the holes for the crew doors, uh, that all looks like that's correct for a Mark IV layout. But it's not correct for Mark VI. That's my understanding of it. And um, again, you're getting into a, a situation now that you have to know what you're looking for, otherwise you're not going to notice it. So I don't, I'm, you know, this is nitpicking. I think if we didn't have the wheels, I wouldn't be discussing this. But if there's already an issue with the wheels, we might as well have a look at what the other issues are in the kit. So um, not for a Mark IV, but yes for a Mark VI. And as it's the same kit, we have to review it at the same uh, time. Best way to fix that, chuck stowage on it and then you can't see it. So, you know, that is an easy way out of that, to be honest. And these uh, these did get plenty of stowage. Uh, and then we've got a few little niggles just up on the turret. And that boils down to this piece here. I won't get it out of the bag. So what we've got here are these two different pieces. They're the same side, so this is a pistol port. Now, there should be bolts on these. And again, remarkably, in their 72nd kit, the bolts are there. I mean, you know, you, you sh this is why it's staggering. They've got it right. This is actually a really quite accurate model. And, um, you know, they've taken it up to 35th and they haven't even scaled up their own plans or even consulted them. So, as you can see, it's not just a case of gluing bolts on. Uh, they're actually recessed. Uh, that is if this is to be led to be correct. That's a good point. So it might not be quite right, but there is meant to be bolts on the pistol ports like that. I think they're both sides, yeah. And once again, in the 135th kit, brand new tooling, there's nothing. So it's a bit of a bit of a shame. I mean, apart from that, when we look at the rest of the model, we got tons of parts all across it so uh, certainly on this sprue we've got different mantlets different guns um, all kinds of different ways about going and doing some of this stuff we've got uh, slide mold technology we've hollowed out gun barrels even did i see hollowed out machine gun barrel so you know they've gone to the um gone to the work of sorting that out you've got all the boxes and stowage again another that's the whole mounted machine gun slide molded with a uh, an open end but yeah you know they've gone and uh, gone and messed it up a little bit so uh, that's a little overview and like i said we'll be building it anyway i will get the sovereign update and then i'll try and fix a few things myself uh with a little bit of my own research Okay, so dream kit number one. Oh, there it is. I managed to grab this. Uh, it was actually listed as a, I forget now, something was off here. It said TA153 or something, or 151. It, was all, it wasn't quite right. So, for those of you who don't know, this is the almost over engineered well it is over engineered let's not beat around the bush zukimura ta152 in 148 scale now the ta152 um looks a little bit like a fw190 d9 um but for all intents and purposes it's a completely different aircraft it was a bit of a monster a bit of a beast and um, the most identifying feature about it, I suppose, is that it has extra long wings, as you can see there. So D9 might be sort of as long as that, whereas this has got a whole extra wing tip. But like I said, I'm comparing it to the D9 already, but I mean, there really isn't much comparison as far as what the aircraft could do. Uh, this was a high altitude fighter, um, had extremely good performance. Uh, for late on in the war, men are take on the bomber streams, but as with all with things uh, Luftwaffe, which is a good thing, um, it was 
not too little too late it was a bit too much too late I suppose um, so uh, didn't really get to do a whole lot few, flew, there was a few of them around but it's a real sort of 1945 aircraft now a couple problems with this kit first off I don't know what the guy did with this but I've had to give this a bit of a deep clean I'm a bit uh, over the top of this I don't know what was on it I didn't really want to know what was on it but we've also got um, stains on these uh, instruction sheet so I'm a bit uh, you know I'm not very um, not really into this sort of thing but uh, I can live with it so as you can see it's um, I've never built a Zookie Moore kit never actually had one and believe it or not I got two because now I've got the Horton as well in 148 scale the flying wing but we're we're come to that another day now this is a highly detailed kit um, it has Pretty much a full interior as you can see you've got the, the the engine and the cockpit all the framing um and you've got the radio and uh bits and pieces in the fuselage going back there you've got a three piece fuselage which yes separate tail which also seems a bit um unnecessary uh wing spars <laughs> in the internal bits for the wing um so yeah, it's all a bit, um, all a bit odd, and hopefully it's going to be an okay build. I think it is, but the reason I've got this kit is um, I was after the dragon kit, which actually is perhaps a little bit difficult to build, but um, I thought it would be around as a bit of a cheaper kit. Well, it wasn't. It was going for the same price as what I bought this for, which was just under forty pounds. So I thought, well, if we're going to go for it, let's just grab the Zuki Mora. So this isn't going to be an inbox review, it's just sort of a look through, see what you've got, and see what I've done and why I've done it. So all the sprues are there, nice kit, all sealed, and we've got the decals, or decals, can't believe I've just said decals, it is decals. Um, now, I didn't like the look of these, I also didn't like the look of the um, rather bulky looking instrument panel, so I have gone and got some extras, as this is going to be what uh, me and a friend uh, are kind of terming the gold collection it's kind of a Luftwaffe gold collection I do like the Luftwaffe um, I like a lot of aircraft from different air forces but I do like Luftwaffe planes and um, before anyone starts getting all excitable it is pretty much to do with the camouflage um, you can find great schemes for all aircraft for sure you know everything um, but I said it's a hell of a lot easier to get good interesting paint schemes for Luftwaffe aircraft it's one of the reasons I like them plus this is a you know the FW series is um, well it's just classic you know it just looks right to me I really like the look of it um, so I've got the photo etch kit for set sorry for the dragon kit I've also got the Eagle Eagle Cows uh, decals, which is a great set. Sharing this with a friend, we're also going to do the um, D9. Yes, he's got a set for D9, so we're going to swap a couple of decals. And I'm also going to do the oh TAC, uh, the, a C1, I think I'm going to do, uh, which actually was in JG. Well, hopefully, <laughs> this is where it starts to get a bit tricky. It's it's JG301, I believe, um, and. There's rumours that a C was operational with them. There was a couple of the prototype Cs, which is basically a TA-152 fuselage mated with um, FW-190 D9 wings. Think of it like that. Probably, again, a bit more to it. Now, this is actually... The one I wanted to do is an HO, and the kit is an H1. But Eagle Cows being what they are, uh, they're very informative, and they do tell you back here that... Although the Zuki Mora kit is specifically an H1, which has the additional fuel tanks in the wings, by simply filling the upper wing fuel access panels, it would be converted to an H0, as this is the only external difference. So, there we go. That's great, isn't it? Good stuff. So, here we are. I've gone past it again. What am I looking for? I'm starting to get a bit... Um... That's it. We're doing this one. Green 4, and Green 4 is a H0 
from JG301. And it's JG301 that um, a couple of D9s were serving with, as well as this TA152H. And I'm hoping um, I'm going to get the decals as well from Eagle Cow for the TA15C, which is going to be part of the collection as well. So that's a bit of a long-term thing that I'm, I'm doing in the background for me. I will film this one because this is a bit of a, going to be a marquee build. I've got to be honest, it's um, it's going to have everything thrown at it, and I think it's going to look exceptional when it's done, uh, providing I can um, perform equally. <laughs> um, so yeah, these are I've done these for with the D. D13 that I did, the 190 um, D13, which is also part of the collection. However, I may rebuild that one one day, but I do like the paint scheme of that. Um, now, they were micro scale decals, whereas these, which are by Eagle Cow, are actually printed by Cartograph in Italy. So I'm hoping they're going to be better because the, the ones I used for D13 were uh, micro scale and I didn't like them at all. They're a bit tricky. So that's all good. That's what this is. Lovely kit, so not easy to get hold of. Um, also got some of the Dragon X also. I'm thinking just because they're hollowed out, even if I have to cut them off, if they don't fit, at least I can use the hollowed out exhaust. So yeah, this was a tricky kit to get, a bit of an eBay score, very happy to have it in the stash. Now, for the next one, um, it was my birthday, uh, right at the end of May, and I was getting a few kits uh, again, for <laughs> reasons that we discussed earlier, with sort of lockdown, is, is actually um, struggling to think of anything else to get. And then I was walking around in Tesco's, uh, not paying any attention to my uh, better half, and noticed that this came up on eBay, and I was looking, and I thought, well, um, I have been trying to get a few of these kits, and uh, putting bids on, and not getting anywhere, sort of putting on a 35, 45 pound bid, and it's running up to 50, 55 pounds, and I saw one just, I refreshed, saw one come straight up uh, as at 30 pounds, and I thought, ah, right, I'll stick a bid on, and as I was sticking a bid on, it said add to basket, and I thought, oh, hang about, and I noticed that it was a buy it now price, so I bought it now for you know, we could end up getting an empty box with a potato rolling around inside uh, because there was no images of what was inside it. But I'm happy to report we got this minus that, which is the complete Tamiya DO335 kit, complete with what looks like the um, metal weight as well. Now, this is a kit that I missed out on first time round and it it ain't easy to get. I'm sure it would be easy to get if we were still doing shows and that sort of thing, but obviously we're not. So as soon as one of these goes up on eBay, it is just gone. So I'm happy, thankfully, after two years of trying, and I mean two years, of course I could have paid 65 quid for one of these, but I'm not going to pay 65 pounds. You know, the kit is worth 35 quid, 30 to 35 quid, and that's what I'm willing to pay. And that's another thing that we'll get onto one day. So the fact that people are bidding these kits up to make them um, cost more than what they're worth, you know, I'm not willing to actually pay that, so i got to wait. And um, it paid off this time. So, problem with this kit, Tamiya, first off, Tamiya decals can be a bit iffy, um, but in particular these have actually already yellowed. Never going to use them anyway. Always going to be a bit of a marquee build again, just like the TA-152. Now, I had this kit for a, bit of, for a week and I kept looking at it every day because I was a bit sort of... Um, well, I couldn't believe I still had it, you know, that I've managed to get it. So I'm very, very pleased to have this kit. It's one I've been after for a long time. Remember when I was, uh, I don't know, 13, 14, reading Tamiya Model Magazine, seeing this in the back of it, getting the um, Tamiya uh, yearly annual, you know, and seeing this in there with the two-seater, and I just thought, you know, that's going to be a... always like the look of it. So now to have it, I'm very, very pleased. Because of the type of build this is going to be, I've actually chucked two etch sets at it because I couldn't work out what was going on here. Um, you've got two different sets for this kit. Usually you have a zoom and then a zoom plus something, but this one seems to have uh, different bits for the same kit. Uh, but anyway, these are relatively cheap. So I got these, so we've got enough stuff to go in the cockpit. Obviously, we've got a duplicate of instrument panels. Um, I don't. It's not for that one's for the two-seater either. They're both for the one-seater. 
So I, I don't really know what's going on there, but each one had different features that I wanted to add. So, you know, I thought, hey, let's do it. Uh, I got some uh, Montex masks, because if you're going to do it, you're going to do it right. So we're going to paint the markings on this one. I think it'll be a lovely little build. And again, that will be one that will be coming this year. I'm not going to put anything on it, but it is this year. It is going to happen. Um, and again, my good friend who has been helping me out with all things Luftwaffe has uh, managed to score for himself this book and um, given it to me on uh, on loan until I've managed to actually build the kit. So there we go. This is about is, there, is everything you want to know about this Dornier 335 is you're ever likely to want to. It's in here. So it's a uh, cracking, cracking book. As we go through, we've got a lot of, um, of the archive pictures, but as we go through the back, we've got details of the... Um, it's in uh, America. That's where this is. So there is one of these sort of preserved in... Um, in the US, which is great. As you can see, I mean, look at that. That picture's worth, well, worth every penny of the book, isn't it? So we're going to do a lot with this. And we've even got historical photos of that as well uh, to show, you know, in case obviously some things go missing, get changed. We just have this as well alongside it. I mean, that is an, a, a ridiculously brilliant photograph to have of the cockpit. So there we go. That's a couple of things. So it's not armor based. This is aircraft. That's that's you know this is part of my aircraft collection. Um, but that's something that's going to be coming soon. As far as the armor, for all you guys who like armor, that's just continuously coming down the line. And I'm going to um, got quite a lot of German builds coming through and a few Soviets. And then I'm going to because um, it's starting to make me feel a little bit empty. <laughs> I'm going to. Um, do a whole run of British armour. Um, I've got some really great kits in the stash, so you're going to enjoy that for all you Brit guys. Um, including, um, I've actually just picked up, well we'll get into that next. So this is, with all that said, this is actually the next build. So this is a buddy build that's going on with three of us, but I'm filming this. Um, I think one of the other chaps is as well. Um, so this is the Trumpeter BF109 G2. Now, this is an alright kit. Again, looking at um, problems, the Trumpeter G's, F's and G's, do have issues. Now, of all of them, this is the best pick, the G2. This is the closest to the actual kit, it's meant to, actual plane it's meant to be out of the box. There's a couple things to be added. Um, the rudder's undersized in this kit, um, I believe, because it's done, or it's been measured from a picture where the rudder is turned something like that it's a bit of a mad thing anyway it is undersized uh, let's show you so there's the kit rudder so there you can see there's a slight different shape there different size um, it look doesn't look much here on camera but it's actually shorter as well so it's actually that there you go that's the difference it does make all the difference so I'm just adding that and we're adding some wheels as well, some F wheels, because this is later G, and I believe the G2 actually has wheels that are more like an F or an E uh, before they changed over to the later G wheels. So that's going to be a kit that you will see coming down the line shortly. Oh, and it's going to be a uh, Soviet boy. This one here, Green Hearts. Lovely scheme. Absolutely stunning. So stay tuned for that. So there we go, this is what I'm going to be cracking uh, tonight as soon as this video is, is done, so thanks for watching that. So as always, uh, please stay tuned to the channel. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I'd like to know what you think of the some of the kits I've been buying and some of the ideas I've got going forward. Um, and as always, thanks for tuning in. And uh, don't worry because there'll be plenty of videos coming down the line shortly. So I'll see you in the next video.